Welcome to the first episode in a Legendarium series about 17th century Britain. In the first episode, War in the Scottish Highlands, we will talk about how a feud between the Campbell and McGregor clan led King James I to pass new laws that marked the beginning of the end for Highland culture. As Europe entered the modern age, Scotland remained a land divided. The rugged, emerald green hills of the Highlands remained only nominally under the control of the kings of Scotland. There, many men recognized no authority beyond their clan leader. Such men could put together followings of hundreds based on their skill in war and herding cattle. Indeed, a clan could be understood as a core family with many extended relations and followers who might bear the same name. According to myth, all members of this clan shared a common ancestor, whether real or mythical. Low-level warfare often raged between the clans, even as the Highlanders benefited from the wealth to be found in the south. Each autumn, vast trains of thousands of shaggy-haired, curly-horned black cattle made their way into Edinburgh and London. Reaving and retrieving, or the thieving of cattle, became a sport in the Highlands, tolerated and practiced by many. Indeed, another form of retrieving emerged called blackmail. At first, the ferocious Highland clans took pay from lowland magnates to protect their cattle. Soon enough, the Highland clans turned it into a protection racket, taking money from the lowlanders in exchange for not stealing their cattle. Feuds over cattle and sheep could soon escalate into battles that became the stuff of legend. In clan warfare, men assembled in battle lines several ranks deep. Clan leaders stood at the front, proudly proclaiming their ancestry and the great deeds of their forebears. Then they worked their men into a frenzy until they beat axes and spears against their wooden shields and shouted insults at the enemy before charging. In the west of Scotland, an especially bitter feud raged between the Campbell clan and the McGregor clan. Curiously, the two families appear to have gotten along well at first, more business partners than rivals. However, the Campbell clan knew the importance of royal power, currying favor with first the kings of Scotland and then England. This in turn expanded Campbell wealth and power. In 1583, the young leader of the clan MacGregor died mysteriously, and the Campbells pressed to buy his land from the MacGregor family. Roy MacGregor provided his answer by ambushing and slaughtering a Campbell party. It did not take long for this feud to reach stunning levels of cruelty, at least according to Highland legend. Supposedly, the Campbells dined in a small stone castle which bore their name, looking down on a pit while any MacGregor found on their land was beheaded. In time, the pit filled with grinning skulls, picked clean by crows. Further legends told that the clan Campbell nursed a pack of black hounds on milk taken from MacGregor women so that the hounds better knew the scent of a MacGregor hiding in their marshes. For a generation, a cycle of killing and revenge killing, cattle raid and counter raid made the rivers of the highlands run red. Within this storm of clashing axes and splintered shields came a tragic love story, again according to Highland lore. One of the younger leaders of the clan MacGregor, Gregor MacGregor, fell in love with a woman of the Campbell clan named Marion. The love between the two transcended the bone-deep hatred between the two clans. Smitten, the two lovers tried to vanish into one of the forested glens of the Highlands. However, the black hounds of the Campbell clan chased them down. When her kinsmen captured Marion, they found her pregnant with the child of Gregor MacGregor. Filled with hatred, the Campbell men then chopped Gregor to bloody ribbons in front of his wife. In 1603, MacGregor fortunes appeared to turn when two Gregor men took refuge in an outhouse on the property of the Colquhoun clan. There they feasted upon a poached sheep. 
Upon discovery by Kolkuhun men, they had to go before the clan chief in his castle, who sentenced them to death. A lowland noble, the Earl of Argyle, saw a chance to be rid of the clan MacGregor. He actively encouraged the MacGregor chief to take revenge on the Kol Cahoons, assuring him that no one would interfere. Of course, Argyle assumed the MacGregors would be wiped out. The new leader of the MacGregor clan, Alastair, mustered about 300 men with help from his allies, the MacFarlands. The MacGregor MacFarlane army approached from the nearby hill at Glen Fruin, while a Col Cahoon force of 700 approached through the marshes, stumbling around in the icy bogs. Over 140 Col Cahoon men died in a bloody MacGregor ambush. Supposedly, a group of schoolboys from a nearby town came to watch the battle, but were caught up in the terrible battle and most of them died. Argyle and the Campbells saw this battle as their chance to take a case before King James VI of Scotland, now also King James I of England as well. Argyle and the Campbells painted a vivid picture of MacGregor atrocities, portraying them as a danger to both the King's law and peace in Scotland. Indeed, they may well have invented the story of the slaughtered schoolboys to further ruin the reputation of the MacGregors. Whether this is true or not, King James was convinced and proscribed the clan MacGregor. The enormity of this sentence cannot be overstated. Any man who identified himself as a MacGregor could be killed on sight. Any woman known to be a MacGregor could be branded on the cheek. MacGregor children could be taken from their parents and given to a more loyal, law-abiding family. No MacGregor man could carry a knife, not even to cut their meat. With no choice, the clan MacGregor disappeared into the hills. The Campbells received rich rewards, taking most of the MacGregor land and in time becoming one of the greatest landowning families in Scotland. The clan MacGregor's fame would revive under the legendary Rob Roy MacGregor, an aspiring magnate and cattle drover who went broke and turned raider. However, this feud served as a reminder of how Royal power changed Highland society and how clever clan leaders used the crown for their advantage. King James I, the scholar king, saw laws as the way to tame the Highland clans, whose ways seemed more suited to the early medieval rather than the early modern age. In 1609, King James passed the Statutes of Iona, which aimed at nothing less than the abolition of Highland culture. King James I worried about some of the clans remaining resolutely Catholic, so the statutes called for the installation of Protestant ministers in all Highland parishes. The statutes also ended the clan practice of extorting free quarters and provisions from weaker villages, also called blackmail. King James seems to have especially feared the clan chiefs throwing feasts which could last for days and help to bind the clans together. So King James outlawed the importing of wine or whiskey into Scotland without a permit, from the king of course. Worst for the Highland culture, King James banned the carrying of pistols or blades outside the house to temper their military culture. Thus, the MacGregor Campbell feud went a long way towards bringing about an end to traditional Highland culture. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.